Well, hello there. In this little video today, I am answering a question that came in. How can I set boundaries with my partner? Every time I bring something up, they get extremely defensive and then it turns into a fight. Okay, well, if you don't know me, my name is Terry Cole. I'm a licensed psychotherapist, a relationship expert, and the author of Boundary Boss. Does this sound familiar to any of you? You have a complaint, you have a request, you'd like to uh, make a simple request with your partner or with anyone, sister, mother, somebody, and they immediately defend what they did, defend their action, become defensive. Say you're attacking them, even if you're not, because that's basically the vibe I get from this question. So what can we do? Well, part of it is that if you know your person, in this case, it is her partner, is very defensive, you have to get really good at not being defensive. It's almost like having to act more grown up or less activated than we feel because nothing gets solved. Dr. Harriet Lerner, who's one of my psychological heroes, um, she says, defensiveness is the arch enemy of listening. And so the moment anyone becomes defensive in a conversation and, and stays that way, you now have pivoted towards no problem solving. Nothing good is coming out of that. Because a lot of times someone being defensive can then make you want to be defensive. If you are met with any complaint or request from your person, because what are the, what are the ways that someone who's defensive can minimize what happened, they can be dishonest about it, they can deny it and say that's it didn't happen at all. They can flip the script on you if you're the person who has a complaint, saying you're too sensitive, you're crazy, what's wrong with you. They can now up the ante. So if you have a complaint, they can ignore what you're saying and say, well, just like what you did last week. So it's you, it's about you. So again, it's, it's like a counterattack basically on, on what is happening. They can also try to make you feel guilty to stop you by acting victimized or like exhausted or something so that you feel so bad. You're like, okay, forget it. It's not even a big deal. Or they can stonewall you. Right. And I mean, listen, there's other things too, but those are kind of the top things that people do. But all these things are so bad for problem solving, obviously, and they're so bad for a relationship in general. So, and maybe you're the one who is defensive a lot. It really is something to look at and to work on because it becomes this roadblock, not just in relationships, but in your personal growth as well. If we can't look honestly at ourselves and our own behavior, how can we evolve? How can we move on to the next place in our lives if we're too busy justifying the hell out of what we did or didn't do? So basically you staying calm is important. Not getting sucked into the defensiveness dance is really important too, even though it might be really tempting to be kind of tit for tat, like, oh yeah, and then you don't do that. And try to have compassion for your person, if you can, and sort of reiterate, hey, babe, this is not about, I'm not criticizing you. I'm sharing with you how I feel. So please think of it as you and me against the problem. It's really not me against you. I love you, right? I, I just don't wanna have these misunderstandings between us and I, do, and I want you to know how I feel because I think it's important because I love you. So there's ways of staying lovingly connected even when someone is being defensive. Slowly but surely, but one really major thing that you gotta do for the person who wrote in is do your best to model non-defensive behavior and responses to a request or a complaint. I hope that was helpful. I wanna hear from you. Are you super defensive? Is your person super defensive? Your sister, your mother, have you learned something? How do you handle it? Drop a comment, please. And thank you, thank you, thank you for being with me. And as always, take care of you.